Look at what's happened in the financial markets over the last couple of weeks. We're effectively a couple of years ago, and I, I used to be, to my shame, involved in financial regulation. But, but uh, you know, effectively what we did was we said we know they're up to something, but we can't really bring ourselves to work out what it is, or we're not prepared to pay the money to employ the, the kind of professionals that we need on our side to tell us what it is that they're up to. And actually, as it turned out, a lot of them didn't know what they were up to, and certainly their senior management didn't know what they were up to. And when you have an information gap like that and a lack of regulation, it leads to catastrophe, especially where the risks are not evenly distributed, but can lead to major catastrophic shocks, as is the case in military affairs, as in the case in all financial systems, as, in, as is the case, unfortunately, it turns out, in climate change where the risks are not evenly distributed and we face extraordinary shocks. So, it doesn't work. It doesn't work to leave it to the market. It doesn't le work to leave it to the state. I, I can't imagine quite what it would look like if you left it just to NGOs, but it would be fun to try sometime. But, but quite clearly, if you ignore any one of those three sectors, or, or often two of them, it, it, it tends to end in genuine human tragedy. So the innovation of institutions I would like to suggest that Carlotta was looking for is partly to take what we've learned from the ICT revolution, from the technological revolution, and apply it at some of these borderlines between these sectors where there is missing information and redefine and define intelligently and carefully where the market can operate and at what point it can no longer operate it, and the state needs to step in. For example, to bring it right down to the, the most granular level. If you drive your car into the city center, and I don't charge you for the environmental effects of congestion and CO2 and various other externalities of your activity, uh, then I have introduced a distortion. I've helped to contribute to Carlotta's tilting of the field towards a, a carbon-intensive economy. That, you know, at that precise point, the market is failing because of the externality. We have to interject what we've learned from intensive and pervasive communication and collaboration to capture that information, whether it's through cameras or tolling systems, as intelligently and flexibly as possible and reapply it to that driver as fast as we are politically able in order to undistort that market. And if we can't do that, then we have to regulate it. I mean, the first step Amsterdam took was to say, you can't park in Amsterdam. It's, it's actually technologically a simple approach, but it works really well. And again and again and again, we have to identify each of those problems in terms of energy, the buildings, the extraordinary high-rise buildings that our so-called work lifestyles are built around and in the transport systems, the traffic systems, we have to go into each one of them and say, where is the externality or imbalance or asymmetry being created? Who's actually paying for this? What is the real cost? What is the real carbon cost? How can we politically, sustainably reimpose that as fast and intelligently and flexibly as possible? And then we get the kinds of things we were we've been talking about for the last two days. So why I think we're going about this in the right way is because we have brought together uh, in this group, this, this, this little community that we've built, uh, this strange mixture of political decision makers and resource allocators and town planners and environmentalists and urban economists and policy people and technological people. Uh, and we've forced them into a room together and that's when innovation happens at the edges of these sectors. That's why we keep coming up with extraordinary ideas. I think the San Francisco eco map is the most perfect, you know, kind of in physical instantiation of what happens when you start to say, let's bring those people, these people, and those people together and re empower people to help us solve this problem. Because the last thing that's going to happen, and the final step, and the only step that's going to make this work to Carlotta's question and challenge is for people's freedom of expression and desire to express their free will 
to be allowed to drive the solutions to this. So it's only when we re-engage with the citizens uh, in urban areas and allow them to co-create the solutions to these problems, allow them to own these problems, to understand the nature, to understand the consequences and costs of their activities and decide themselves with us, together with us as city managers, with us as local businesses, together, freely choose how to make the city a different place that we're going to solve this problem. So we have all the tools in our hand. We have the right sectors. We don't yet have the institutional innovation. We do have placed almost by chance in our hand, I would say, with these, with these tools, the ability to engage and involve people uh, in extraordinary ways that we've not seen for a long time in our societies, which will allow them to join with us in tackling these problems. Uh, we have actually written a huge long paper about this, which um, Nick referred to, um, which we'll make available on the website as well. Uh, and it's, it's full of all kinds of terrific economic jargon for people who like that sort of stuff. I'm going to stop there. I want to thank uh, everybody who, who came, who committed their time and their passion and their insight and their intelligence and their diversity of experiences to helping us uh, on this still relatively early stage of our journey. I'd like to thank Nick Villa uh, and his team um, for doing what I regard as an extraordinary job in creating a, and, and driving uh, this community. And I'd like to thank all of the cities, and, and particularly the core partner cities, uh, who've shown you know, political commitment, uh, who've given time, who've given energy and effort uh, to get this program up to where uh, it is now. I think it's an extraordinary achievement, but also, unfortunately, I think it's an essential, a vital, and a profoundly important project to be involved in. You couldn't be sitting in a more right place than you're sitting now, working in this way to solve this problem in this way. Thank you very much for coming.